If you get numbness and tingling in your thumb and index finger, you may think that you have carpal tunnel syndrome. And you very well may, but there are other things that can cause it as well. Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Candy, and in this video, I'll explain the two most common causes of numbness in your thumb and index finger, plus treatments for each of them. Now, one of the most common causes is obviously carpal tunnel syndrome. The carpal tunnel is a tunnel formed in your wrist with the sides and the floor being made up by your carpal bones, your wrist bones, and then there's a ligament over top called the transverse carpal ligament. Through that tunnel run the tendons to your fingers as well as the median nerve, which goes into your first three fingers and even part of your ring finger. Now that median nerve starts out at your neck, but the most common area where we get entrapped besides the wrist that would cause numbness and tingling in the thumb and index finger would be the C6 nerve root in your neck. So how do you tell the difference as to whether it's being entrapped in your neck or whether it's being entrapped at your wrist? Well, the first way to tell is based on location. If you get purely numbness and tingling in these two fingers, but not your middle finger or ring finger, I would tend to start to look at the neck first. And the reason for that is the C6 nerve root is specific to these two fingers. The C7 nerve root is specific to these three fingers. The median nerve is a mixed nerve made up of multiple nerve roots in your neck ranging from C5 to T1. And so if it's just these two fingers alone, I'd look to the neck first and specifically at the C6 nerve root. Now, that's not to say that can not be the case in carpal tunnel syndrome, but if it's all three or even part of the fourth, that would make me think a little bit more that it's a carpal tunnel problem. And keep in mind that it doesn't have to be one or the other. Oftentimes it's both, that there's both a neck component and a wrist component. Now, furthermore, if moving your wrist, especially into positions of extreme flexion like this, cause aggravation of your symptoms, then you would tend to think it's more carpal tunnel syndrome. Additionally, if using your hand, like doing fine motor skills or gripping things, causes you to get a flare up of the numbness and tingling in your fingers, then you might tend to think it's coming from your carpal tunnel. There's also a test known as the flick sign, where if you flick your wrist around like that when you're having symptoms, if it makes the symptoms decrease, that's another indication that it could possibly be carpal tunnel syndrome. Additionally, if you tap on your carpal tunnel right there at the base of your wrist, this is called the Tonell sign. And if that causes numbness and tingling in your fingers, it could potentially be a problem with your carpal tunnel. But keep in mind that tapping on any nerve can cause numbness and tingling, especially if it's already a little bit irritable from being pinched up at the neck. So what would indicate more of a C6 nerve root problem in your neck? Well, the nerves come out of the side of your neck and the things that tend to narrow the spaces where the nerves come out are tipping your head towards the same side, turning your head towards the same side, or looking upwards. So if you notice any of those positions, either tipping towards the side, turning towards the side, or tipping upwards aggravates your symptoms, you might tend to think that it's a little bit more of a neck problem. Those are most common patterns that close the nerve roots, but herniated discs in the neck or other neck problems can also impinge on the nerve roots. So really any motion whether it's those motions I just mentioned or looking down or to the other side changes or aggravates your symptoms, then it's an indication it might be a neck problem. Now, after the nerves leave your neck, they pass through an area known as the brachial plexus. And one area where that brachial plexus can get entrapped is between the first rib and the collarbone. That's a little narrow space. And the first exercise that I'll show you actually helps to target that space, as well as the openings of where the nerve roots come out of your neck. To do this exercise, you'll take a stretching strap or a belt, a towel, a dog leash, anything long 
but tense that won't stretch. A stretching band is not good for this. And put it over your shoulder. Then you're going to sit on the other end of it. You put it underneath your buttocks so it won't move. Then pull it across your chest like a seatbelt. Now it is important to note that this should hit as close to your neck as possible. You don't want it down over your shoulder blade like this. You want it close to your neck and pulling across the body. Then you want to pull tension down on the belt there. Then once you have that tension down, you want to hold that tension down. You're not pulling back and forth. Just hold the sustained tension. That pulls your first rib down and it opens up the spaces where the nerves run between your first rib and your collarbone. Now you can move and glide your nerves by moving your neck a little bit better. That also stretches out the scalene muscles, which attach to the first rib and up to your neck. Then as you tip your head away, this opens up the spaces where the nerve roots come out of your neck. So go in as far as you can comfortably, just tipping to the side, back and forth like that can help open up the spaces where the C6 nerve root leaves your neck and additionally the space where it passes between the collarbone and the first rib. Now the second exercise is going to target the carpal tunnel. Remember positions like this narrow the carpal tunnel and conversely positions like this can open up space in the carpal tunnel but they also stretch the tendons that run through the carpal tunnel and doing that can also tense the transverse carpal ligament. So doing a stretch this way where you extend your wrist out and elbow straight, that's another good exercise to help if you have numbness and tingling in your thumb and index finger that's coming more specifically from your carpal tunnel. Now I should note you don't want to provoke symptoms while doing this. This out to the side position like this is actually a nerve tension position and we'll go through an exercise for that a little bit later but going out like this extending at the elbow extending at the wrist and extending through the fingers helps to stretch out the muscles that run on that underneath side of the wrist now additionally the transverse carpal ligament runs across your wrist and forms the roof of the carpal tunnel if your palm is especially turned in like this where you get a lot of doming of the arch and you see very prominent muscles on either side by your thumb and little finger, there's a chance that that narrowing of that space could also be narrowing the carpal tunnel. So another exercise to help is just to spread your palm out really wide. Sometimes it helps to take your other hand and just pull back slightly like this, or if you can do it actively, just opening your hand and splaying your fingers out as widely as you can. That helps spread the wrist bones apart and open up the space where that transverse carpal ligament is. Additionally, it can be helpful to kind of massage the muscles around the base of the thumb and around the base of the little finger so you can stretch out, and expand a little bit more like that. Now, once you've opened up the spaces in the neck, opened up the spaces in the thoracic outlet, and stretched out the muscles around the underneath side of your wrist. Next, it's time to move the nerve in general. The median nerve is on its most tension when your arm is extended out this way in external rotation as compared to internal rotation. So palm up, wrist extended back as much as you can with fingers extended, and then tip your head away. That puts the median nerve on the most tension possible. And if this provokes symptoms, all it really tells you is there's a problem somewhere along the median nerve. It doesn't necessarily tell you whether it's at the neck, whether it's at the wrist, or somewhere in between. But if this brings on your symptoms by going into a median nerve tension position, then just come out of that position and go through the range that you can comfortably. This is not a stretch to the point of pain type exercise. Nerves can be rather irritable, so when you get them angry, 
they tend to stay angry for a period of time. So just go back and forth through this range. There's a debate about doing glides where you're moving your head and arm together like windshield wipers or doing tensioners where you're stretching out the nerve. I think that gets too complex. All you really need to do is move the nerve and give it pain-free movement experiences. So for most people, I say don't even worry about your neck. Put your arm in a position where it's comfortable and go back and forth like that. Now, additionally, another time when people experience numbness and tingling in their thumb and index finger, whether it's coming from their carpal tunnel or whether it's coming from their neck, is at nighttime. Using a carpal tunnel wrist splint can be helpful diagnostically because if it relieves your pain when you sleep with this on, it can tell you that the symptoms may be coming from your carpal tunnel. Additionally, if they are coming, it's often very helpful because a lot of people tend to curl their wrist up like that at night when they sleep, and you can't really control that. So it helps keep your wrist in a better position and helps you avoid six to eight hours or more of your wrist being in a position like that where it's pinching on the nerve as it comes through your carpal tunnel. So a wrist splint is really helpful. I'll put a link to this one in the description below, but you can get these at drug stores. It really doesn't matter which one you use, just so long as it holds your wrist in a neutral position and has a firm support down on the bottom that won't allow you to flex or bend your wrist. Additionally, using a proper fit pillow is important at nighttime. You don't want one so thin that it allows your head to tip over to one side, pinching the nerves in your neck, but you also don't want one so thick that it pushes you up to the opposite side. Now, if you'd like more tips on sleeping positions for neck pain, as well as pillow tips, check out this video up here, or if you'd like more tips on carpal tunnel syndrome exercises, check out this video over here. But before you go, if you found this video helpful, Make sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.